My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. Uh, good evening, Mr. Gary Edwards. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you, sir. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well, and welcome all to uh, Book Corner Extra Time with author of this fantastic piece of work, Revy's Plan for Leeds United, Summer of 63, Mr. Gary Edwards. Before we get into the book, Gaz, I want a little bit of your background. How did you get into writing football books? And you're a big Leeds United fan. So uh, talk about yourself a little bit for the first few minutes, please. Well, obviously, I've been a, a Leeds fan since the early 60s. My, my dad took me like most people and uh, it became a thing. And um, well, it became, it became a monster, really, to be honest with you. It, it took over my life um, and I just carried on going watching Leeds everywhere, everywhere possible, and it's con- it's continued to this day. I never even thought of writing until a mate of mine, a West Ham fan, uh, died now, bless him, uh, Alan Osborne. Um, he went into publishing magazines, uh, journal. It was his, um, a dental dental thing that he had. And it were, it was his idea, and I, I thought, you know, it... it it, it will work, and it did. And I started telling stories of what we'd done in his travels, you know, here, there, and everywhere. And it, um, it, it took off. It was great, great. Is this your first book that you've written about Leeds, or have you written other uh, publications about Leeds United? No, this this is my seventh book actually. Yeah. Um, my first book was Paint It White, which which Alan, um, was the the, the the idea behind it was him who planted the idea in me, if you like, you know. Um, and then we we did paint it white, which which is still selling today, thankfully. So yeah, and they made a stage play out of it. It went it went to the West End. It went all over the UK, yeah. and uh, and I've I've carried on doing it ever since. It's been it's been great. So let's just briefly talk about that paint it white. When you say paint it white, I mean there was um Rolling Stones track, wasn't that? About paint it black. I mean this is paint it white. Clearly it's about Leeds United. What's the concept about that book? Paint it white was was basically my travels uh, watching Leeds from the early sixties. Oh, yeah. And the, the paint it white um stemmed from the fact that I run a decorating company. Yes. And um, we we refuse to paint red red any red paint at all in our business. Um, White rose, red rose. <laughs> the red rose, of course. Yeah, yeah. The, the, our friends at Old Trafford, and yeah. we will not paint. We remove red paint free of charge, um, <laughs> and we will not paint red. And it, it that's that's been forty years now, and it just it, it just took off, and and people took the idea. Um, and uh, that's 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 where it stemmed from, and it, it took off a, a lot 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 bigger than I thought it was going to be. If you know what I mean, the the these people got in touch with me and asked me to if if it would be okay to look at the prospect of putting it on stage. Um, they had a two week tour in Leeds to see what it was like. They had some great actors. I couldn't believe it, and it were all a bit surreal to be quite honest with you. And then it, it, it went UK. It went all over the country. Who played you guys? Sorry? Who played you? Uh, Gary Dunnington. An actor called Gary Dunnington. He's been in Sharp and right. all these all sorts of programmes. Gary Dunnington, an absolutely fine actor, superb actor. Um and he, he, he took it he took the button and ran with it and, and it like I say it were it was surreal to sort of like Going to a little a, a little um, theatre, not knowing what it was going to be like, and um, met the actors beforehand. I'd, I'd met them obviously, but it was absolutely superb. They absolutely did an unbelievable job. Unbelievable. Absolutely fantastic. And. 
for those people really that don't you know understand English football um we have a team called Manchester United who you know I, I know you're a Leeds fan but arguably yeah. are the the biggest club in in Britain and then we have mm-hmm. Liverpool and they have a, a big yeah. rivalry with winning major tournaments but the yeah. rivalry between Manchester United and Leeds United almost eclipses that of the big two traditionally there's absolute hatred isn't there it goes back to the war of the roses and yeah. white rose white rose i absolutely hate the red rose now i don't know whether it's the same on the other way i'm a birmingham city supporter uh, there's yeah. a lot of rivalry between birmingham city and aston villa i like both yeah. teams as i've grown up and i'm a granddad and i've got family on both sides of the divide <laughs> yeah. But where yeah. you are, there is absolute hatred and loathing, isn't that? It, uh, yeah, I suppose it is. Uh, yeah. it, it sounds a strong word, but it, it's not. But we're not. We're not keen on them. Let's put it that way. Eh? <laughs> 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 well, this book really needed to be written because, you know, I've been watching football since I was a kid. Um, I'm 58 years of age now. And I I would say that the greatest team that I've ever seen play football in this country is Leeds United. I'm certainly yeah, not a yeah, Don Reavy yeah. fan uh, of the England years. I think he was the wrong no, choice no. for a number of reasons. But I think you agreed that as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah but what yeah. I'm going to say to you, is Don Reavy the greatest signing that Leeds have ever made, or is it Bobby Collins? Well, as a, as a player, it's got to be Bobby Collins, uh, without a doubt. Um, and, and that, again, in turn, is down to Don Reavy, you yes. know. He, 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 played, he came and played for Leeds, obviously, in 1958. Um, and he's had a, a fairly good career. He, he's got six England caps. Uh, he um, sort of invented the Revy plan. Yeah. Uh, it was Johnny Williamson, who, who, who is, was his good friend at Man City, that, that, that actually devised the plan, obviously taken from the, the Hungarians. But it was um, it was Don who brought these players in a keen eye. And it was that it was that season, that summer, that he began to put everything together and Bobby Collins was a master stroke. He brought Bobby Collins from Everton for 25,000 um, and Everton fans were seething over it, you know. And then he added, in later years, Johnny Giles and then, he went, well, Billy, Billy Bremner was here before, for Johnny Giles and he just had that eye. He knew exactly what he wanted and he built it and he built it and he built it and it, it worked. And um, he he never gets the recognition that he deserves from me, and neither do Leeds United. But we know that that summer of '63 was uh, one hell of a summer, really well. I would say that that you know to a lot of people they don't because they've always had the tag of of dirty Leeds, yeah, uh, etc. And, and the Neely men. But uh, I had a wonderful hour hour and a half with uh, Johnny Giles and uh, sniffer Alan Clark as, as well. Right, yeah. And and both of the boys w- were, were telling me that, you know, we, we won as much as what Liverpool's Bill Shankly did, you know, in those days, more so John, yeah. because John was there uh, before yeah. Alan. Alan come after the 1969 FA Cup final, of course. That's right, yeah, Leicester yeah, City yeah. against uh, yeah, Manchester City. Yeah, yeah. But, but John, one of the big selling points was the fact that Bobby Collins had signed for Leeds United. Leeds United were a second division team. Leeds United right. were almost staring the third division in the face. Yes, what Don Reavy done for Leeds United was absolutely astronomical. And you've alluded to the fact of the Revy plan. But Don's always maintained that it wasn't him, it was his best mate in football that devised that plan. Don's never really took the credit. He's always took the abuse, if you like, the you know the match fixings, yes. no, yes. Uh, nothing found. The Bob Stoko you've talked about that in the book, nothing found. There's a lot of nothing found, but there's a lot of mud that was thrown at Leeds United, and a certain amount of that mud will always stick. But again, nothing ever found. No, no, and that, that's that's the um, it's a bit of a bugbear that that dirty Leeds tag. 
like you say, um, is a misdemeanour, really. So the club's itself, put together, it, wasn't it? It, it, it was put together by yeah. the FA. Yeah, but it and, and, the and it was all the Leeds United teams of that season. Not that's not the right. first team, all of the teams, <laughs> wasn't it? That, that's right. And, and Le- Leeds, Leeds had actually had one player, which is quite unbelievable. This. They had one player sent off in 43 years. Yeah. And, and and the second player to be sent off was Gary Sprake in a friendly against Scunthorpe. Mm-hmm. So in 43 years, well, in 45 years, you know, it was it was absolutely ridiculous. And and it, it was it was a I don't know if vendetta is the right word. It it was a complete um, hatred campaign, I would say, because mm-hmm. it, it was in the I was I was as you as you say in the book. I was speaking to Duncan Revy. I, I got to be really good friends with Duncan in a previous book I was writing, and he still has the copy of the FA News or Review, as it were called, and it's, and it, it, it has it has that actual slander in it, you know, and like you say, they, were, they, they actually took on board that, that there were all, all, all teams involved, uh, juniors, reserves, you know, and Leeds didn't have one single player sent off that season. Yeah. That, they, that they cited, whereas our friends at Old Trafford had five sent off, mm. just as an example, <laughs> you know, um, and it, it just stuck, and like you say, it stuck, um, and a lot of supporters still to this day sing it, obviously, Leeds fans sing it now, as a, as a, to, to get back at them, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's almost it's like, like a badge of honour, isn't it? That's right, they sing it back to them, um, and it, 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 it just that end, ends it really, and and people don't really know why they're singing it, you know. <laughs> there were actually some people singing it even during David O'Leary's reign, uh, when when we were called somebody's second team, you know. Uh, well, we like that team, and we we never liked that if you like, if you if you know what I mean. We we we, we leads, you know. It's a little bit like Millwall, isn't it? Nobody likes us. We're Millwall. Leeds have always had that. But it's always been, for, for me, and I always look at football impartially. Again, I'll go back. Um, the, the greatest team that I've ever seen in English football is Leeds United. Uh, I yeah. think that, that Manchester City uh, would run Leeds of the 70s uh, very, very close. But what I'll always yeah. maintain is that Manchester City have two teams of international players and they have a team for the league, team for the Champions League and then they play their kids or a reserve team in the FA Cup and the League Cup. Yeah. Leeds United yeah. didn't ever do that or it wasn't like no. that back in the 60s and 70s. John was saying no. to me, you know, we won honours with 14, 15, maybe 16 players. Sniffer said That's exactly right. the same. You know, if you yeah. were not even 100% fit, you, you played and that's the way it was. And Sniffer said to yeah. me, he said, Paul, we were going for the treble every season, but with a that's really right. small squad. And yeah. what always, when people, because you always have to have balance for me. It's always, always about balance. Nobody yeah. ever mentions that Leeds United were cheated out of the 1973 Cup Winners Cup final and they against yeah. AC Milan and were cheated yeah. out of the 1975 European Cup final against Bayern Munich. That's right. And right. they were cheated. 100% was. cheated. 100%. 100%. But, but again, Gaz, that's always forgotten, isn't it? It's never, ever brought yeah. up. Well, people, that, I say it's convenient, really, isn't it? People yeah, it don't, don't want to hear that, you know. No, um, and I'm totally unbiased because I'm a football fan and I'm a lover yeah. of football. Let's go yeah. back to, again, a, another um, Manchester United in 92. The class of 92, the greatest group of kids that we've ever seen come through in British football. No, that's not true. We had the babes, no, in, the, we had the babes in the 50s and we had Leeds United yeah. in, in the 60s. Most of that Leeds team that conquered English football and would have conquered European football were kids coming through the youth academy there at Leeds United. Something that Don had been passed the baton on, believed in it and ran with it, didn't he? That, that's right, yeah. Uh, Bill Lampton uh, and Jack Taylor, yeah. his previous predecessors, uh, actually had, had a young Norman Hunter there and, and Jack Charlton had been there for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, and like you say, Don 
Don saw the potential, and obviously it's 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 old at how we we're going to go to Bournemouth and Harry Reynolds um, tore, tore his, his letter to go because he, he realised the potential. Um, and, and, and he just, and, and he was so caring with Don. Um, I, I, got, I, got to, I got to know the family. I never knew Don as, I, I met Don a few times yeah. and I met a few, the players a few times, but I really got to know Don, if you, if you like, after he after he died uh, through his family, yeah. um, uh, Duncan Revy, who, who, who sadly died as well, and and Kim Revy, his daughter, and Elsie, bless her, they were, they were a, a, a fantastic family, really really close knit, and he and he portrayed that in his club, you know, that, like you like you say there, Paul, he, he, he tried it with England and it was never going to work that no. sort of thing at England, um, but at, at, at Leeds. He, he actually hit the nail on the head, and it, it hurts me that he never gets the recognition. And, and they were they were big friends with Bill Shankly. What a fantastic Massive, manager yes. he was! What a fantastic manager! And they were big, big friends, you know. And the families were friends. They went out together, um, and and it was just they, they were football. And football in them days were, were absolutely incredible. I I, I can name. Just about every team in that first division. I can name every single player. I can, you know, you can't do that these days. <laughs> you know, um, it was it were just great. The, the football were fantastic, absolutely fantastic in them days. And um, it's such a shame that he done again. I'm, I know it's repeating myself, but he doesn't he doesn't get the recognition that he deserves. He was such a superb manager. It was, you know, it. It were, it were far ahead of his time. There's no doubt about it. Hundred percent, and and you're absolutely spot on. I think the thing is when when you're an international manager, you have the players, and you have to deal with what goes on. And sometimes you pick players that the press want, and I don't really want to go into the England years yeah. because we're talking about the Leeds United years. Yeah. But but the Leeds United team. They were family. They were a close-knit group of players. They were all Don's sons. And and that come across by both John and Alan. And Sniffer said to me, you do know, Paul, who I'm talking about when I call him the boss. And to this day, I've done the interview probably two, three years ago with Sniffer, John more recently, but he wouldn't call him Don Revy. He wouldn't call him Don. He'd either call him... Mr. Reevy or the yep. boss. You know That's who the right. boss is. And and they That's were right. just so close. The closeness between him and Billy was phenomenal as well, wasn't Incredible. it? Because he played Incredible. with Billy, didn't he? Uh, for yes, for he Leeds did. United. Yes, Billy was homesick. He even went up to Scotland and he brought his girlfriend back. What Reevy yep. done for Leeds is unbelievable. Yeah. And I think it's fantastic that, that you've written this book, Gary, because I've got yeah. so much out of the book. And as I say, I'm a football fan. I'm not a Leeds United supporter, but it's a no, great no. story of Leeds and how that club, because before Don, Leeds wasn't anything. OK, no, after no. Don, you've had periods of time where you've been OK. But Don yeah. Reavy is Leeds United. We we had a we had a period like you say in the fifties when John Charles was was obviously probably the world's greatest player at the time. Yes, uh, and then he came back, which was a, a disappointment at the it time. Was. But um, mm-hmm. and and Don Don didn't want him back. Um, it, Neither because did it, Jack. It, 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 it set his plan, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but but it's funny you should say about Birmingham City. Just just on that is Don Revy. It took a, a Birmingham City fan. To actually arrange for the the statue at Ellen Road, which stands at Don Revy, Jim Cadman. Right? How did um, Jim do that? Jim is a great Jim, man. Jim, Jim Cadman, you you can you, it, we I got on absolutely fantastic with Jim Cadman, and he he was the man behind the Don Revy statue at Ellen Road. Um, it was his project. He got in touch with with me and a few obviously a few other Leeds fans. It was paid for by the supporters. We didn't have a penny from the club no. uh, and Jim Jim Cadman went next time he speak to him give my regards to him he was the man behind Don Revy statue he's also the man behind uh, a lot of stuff about Duncan Edwards 
as well. He is, yeah. They did Ben Regis and uh, them at, uh, at uh, West Brom, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And he's the man behind mm. Aston Villa's uh, 40-year tribute as well. Jim Cadman yeah. is a great man of football. And it doesn't matter who you support, football fans recognise fantastic achievements in football and, yeah, and exactly Don's up there. That's precisely what Jim said, yeah. yeah. But the, the Leeds United coming together, I mean, it didn't happen by accident. It happened by design. But John playing in the middle with Billy, that was more of an accident than design because Bobby Collins had got injured against Torino in a European game. And John That's says right. to, 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 uh, to Don... Don, I'd like to play in the middle a, a bit more because when John yeah. was bought, uh, Matt Busby had fallen out of favour with John and played him on the on the wing. But they always but, played him on the yeah, right wing, yeah. But, but, yeah. but John was a, a central midfield player, but always pushed out a little bit, and um, and and Don took that little bit of a, a gamble, if you like. I mean, how can you have a gamble with John Giles and Billy Bremner? It's almost like ridiculous to even say that, it's isn't incredible. it? But for, again, for incredible. me, when you're looking at duos, Billy Bremner and Johnny Giles, the greatest to this day, the greatest yeah. midfield, central yeah. midfield double act. And Alan Hudson, my friend Alan Hudson, I do many a podcast with Alan, he, yeah. he would say to me, it was the greatest test of anybody to play against John Giles and Billy Bremner. There was a yeah, lot of yeah. rivalry again in the That's 70s all. with Chelsea, That's well, right. 60s and yeah. 70s with yeah. Chelsea. But what I did want to yeah. mention about with, with Jack Charlton and John Charles, Jack also played at centre forward for Leeds United in the early days, didn't he? Yes, he, yes, he did. He did. He did, yeah. Um, like you say, he, he thought he were on his way out when John Charles came back, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, for the second time, um, which which obviously didn't work. And and, and John uh, and Jack thought he were getting his nose pushed out again and Don assured him that it was his place. But yeah, yeah, he, he played up front with Jack and he played at the back and um, and obviously d devised that corner situation, you know, the standing on the goal line. Yes. That what that what that what um had done everything and Les Cocker actually Les Cocker devised it, um to stand on the goal line, um not impede the goalkeeper but but just sort of like make it awkward. <laughs> We're just and, annoying. And England, and, and England took it up and now it's you know it happens quite a lot now. <laughs> I must admit, when I was coaching my kids football, I'd always have someone stand on the goalkeeper because I did yeah. get that from Jack Charlton. That's what Jack used to do, not to impede right. him, not to just to annoy him and rent just space to, in his head. To be in the way, yeah, yeah. And again, Les yeah. Cocker, you've referenced, done so so many great things at Leeds, was so instrumental there uh, at Leeds United with Don Reavy. Yeah. They yeah. there was a great little again. We hear an awful lot about the boot room at Liverpool, but there was also a boot room there at Leeds United, wasn't that? That that never really oh, gets was. mentioned. There was, yeah, and well, it, it seems to be um, uh, the, the gloss over Leeds United as a as a yeah. team. You know, they just seem to pick on the the, the, the bad signs, and uh, and it's it's always I won't say it's annoyed as we we just got on with it now, but it's 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 a thing that. It hurt me for for Revy's family um, and and the the people who were involved because they never again got the got the recognition that um, it's just it's just basically with with, with Leeds that it, it built a team um, they were in front of everybody else without a shadow of a doubt yeah. um, and, and and the football league the football league didn't like it there's no question about that. You talk about the European games, the European finals. We we got we got screwed in a lot of league games, a lot of cup games. West um, Bromwich Albion. West Bromwich Albion. Oh. Uh, do you know it's it, do you know it's funny that because I was speaking to Dave Cocker not long back um, about Les his, his dad. Yeah. Um, and he was telling me a story about um, Ray Tinkler. Yeah. Leeds Leeds had beaten. Leeds had beaten uh, Northampton Town uh, 6-1 in the, in the 60s, mid-60s. And Ray Tinkler were refereeing. And he actually 
he got a headache and he asked uh, Dr. Ian Adams, the Leeds United doctor, to have a look at it. And uh, Dr. Adams says, it's it's migraine, you know. Basically, uh, moving along a bit, he, he had migraine and um, he advised him not to referee the second half, but but, but he did. Mm. And it was 3-1 at half time. And in the, in the second half, the first thing he did was book Billy Bremner for dangerous play. And it went to tribunal and... Leeds took the case, uh, Don Revy, Les Cocker, they all, they all took, and with, with the Dr. Adams as, and, and with, armed with this, this information. Yeah. And Ray Tinkler denied having a migraine. Right. It, yeah, and uh, honestly, it's, it's gospel too. He it, it, it denied having a migraine. He, he actually said that he didn't, and blah, blah, blah. And outside the court, he apologised to Billy saying that he really couldn't discredit himself in front of the VFA. Blimey. And and then and this is and five, six years later you saw what the proof in the pudding. Um and no, he, he wasn't a fan of Leeds, you know, and that's just one referee. Some referees were fantastic um with Leeds. When I was writing a book a few years ago, two referees that spun to mind were Jack Taylor and Kirk Patrick. Yes. Um they were absolutely characters. Really, really good referees, but they were characters, and and they knew the game, you know, uh, they knew the game inside out, um, and you don't get that now, you don't get that these days. It, it, the referees were fantastic, um, and it was just, I don't know, it, it's hard to explain really. There were certain ones that didn't like Leeds, but but by and large, the referees weren't, weren't too bad, and oh. um, but, but Ray Tinkler were, were, a, were a bad egg. Yeah, um, Jack Taylor was famously like, a, a butcher, wasn't he, from Wolverhampton, right, Wolverhampton here in the yeah, Black yeah, Country. Yeah. Uh, I don't fellas. know much about Roger Kilpatrick, but he used to—he was arguably the greatest character. He used to make some right funny little signs, didn't he, when he, he was did, running he and did, that? Yeah. Kil- yeah. Mr. Mr. Pickwick, Mr. Pickwick. <laughs> he he did, yeah, did, yeah. But he, again a character, a larger-than-life character. What I didn't realise as well, because Leeds United in the second division eventually did get promoted into the uh, the first division and yeah. came within a gnat's whisker of winning the double in their first ever season. And I think John um, yeah. told me that Leeds were the first team to have achieved 60 points without actually winning the first division championship. That was That's an right. unbelievable feat. I know that Ipswich yeah. Town have done it. Uh, they've, yeah. they've come up and, and they've won the league and Nottingham Forest have come up and they've won the league. But to have won the double in your first season, that would have been a football first. And it, it is a shame. So yeah, absolutely. It is, is a shame going forward that Leeds didn't actually win the treble because them are two things that if you could put on Leeds United and the fact that they deserved it, those would have been two two scenarios, two situations that they really well, would have deserved. Well, those those two those two things. I mean, like you say, they they, they lost the league on goal average, yes, believe it did. or not, which it were called then, mm. and they lost in extra time against Liverpool in the final. Yeah. Um. The the the, the, the throws a bit at Wembley in '65. To be to be honest, uh, Bobby Collins mm. admitted that, and and. Billy Gunner scored a great goal to take it into extra, well, into extra time. And, um, but the, the treble in, in 70 was heartbreaking, really, because people don't realise, and you can, you can look into this, it's unbelievable. In the running to, in the 1970, when Leeds were chasing a treble, Don, Don actually gave, gave the, the league, he, he, he um, sacrificed the league because they were going for the double um, and, the, the, and the, obviously the treble, but they lost to, to the semi-final against Celtic yeah. in the European Cup. And the, but they played three, three semi-finals against those from Old Trafford. We played at Hillsborough, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and at Villa Park and then finally beat them at Bolton. In between these... Uh, then they played two two cup finals. People don't realise that they played two FA Cup finals in 1970. Yeah, Chelsea. They played, they played Chelsea twice mm-hmm. in a replay at Old Trafford, and and in between these they were having league games. 
when, when, when Leeds played Celtic on the Wednesday, we actually went to West Ham. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage. All the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is there to help you grow. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash work. Shopify.com slash work. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. How to get 30, 30, how to get 30, how to get 20, 20, 20, how to get 20, 20, how to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month? So Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. On the Thursday, yeah. they played in a league game at West Ham the day after. Mm. And if you look at that congestion in 1970, it's, it is really unbelievable. They were playing every other day, and then sometimes they had two days off and three days off, and it was incredible, absolutely incredible. It wouldn't happen now. It wouldn't happen now. No, again, and, and if it did happen now, and, and you're right, it wouldn't, but they would have the squads to be able to... Uh, uh, to accommodate those yeah. fixtures, you yeah, know they yeah. they they'd almost make ten and eleven changes like what they do in uh, yeah, in cup right. competitions. They didn't that's do right. that back in those days, but that, let's say that sixty three season was was phenomenal. And and I says to um sorry sixty uh, sixty four sixty five season, and I said to John uh, regarding that because I didn't realise how how close Leeds United came to winning the double and, and I said yeah. to John what, what was your most unluckiest ground John and he said St Andrews Birmingham City he said we yeah. drew 3-3 we, yeah. three, three. Yeah. we were 3-0 yeah. down and, and yeah. you could argue that if Leeds United would well if Leeds United had a won 4-3 or beat Birmingham City at St Andrews they would they would have won the league and then you're going yeah. in to the FA Cup as league champions and you never know what's going to what's going <laughs> to happen then so just so so close and fine margins. It's right. It's St Andrews was, was that that place because even, even in um, now then what, what year was I say uh, seventy four when they when they went on the thirty four unbeaten yeah, they run. Did, yeah, yeah. It, it ended at St Andrews. <laughs> no, we we yeah. we drew with you uh, at St Andrews in nineteen seventy three. Joe Jordan scored Jordan. a goal four yeah. minutes from time, and then yeah. you were going to equal Burnley's record of nineteen. I think it was twenty twenty one. Um, yeah. for for 30, yeah. 30 games unbeaten, you were twenty nine, and you went to the That's Victoria right. Ground, and that you were two nil up. Joe Jordan. Joe had a goal disallowed. John yeah. come off after I think fourteen yeah. minutes, and yeah. um, and Alan Hudson inspired Stoke City yeah. three two right. victory and yeah. um, and and Leeds. But again, that season Leeds United had gone back a week earlier because Don had had a vision and he says to the boys, "I want to win the league by going That's unbeaten." Right. Yeah, and I think yeah. you, I think you can do it because it was, I think, this season or the season before there was speculation that Don was going to Everton, wasn't there? There was, there was. It was, it was actually going to Everton when, mm. when the, the, the European Cup Winners' Cup final that you talked about in '73. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he'd actually he'd made his mind up to go mm. after that game. He was going to play. He was going to sign for Everton. There's no doubt about it. But after the treatment that Leeds got that night. Yeah, he he, uh, he he abandoned all his all his other plans, um, and he said, "I'm we're with Leeds. We're starting again." And the, obviously, they won the league the following year. Um, but after the disappointment with Stoke, oh, there's a lot of hatred with Stoke and Revy. Yes, um, um, and obviously that was a FA Cup final. But the um, 
But the Salonica one against AC Milan was, was incredible. Absolutely unbelievable. I, I, I did a book a few years ago called No Glossing Over It. Um, and the two referees from that, those two finals, uh, Kitsch Batchin was the Paris one, and Christos Mitches was the one in Greece. And I could never find him. Um, it was untraceable, never found him. I, I found the, the Paris one, um, which were interesting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, yeah, it, it, it was just bought that game. Uh, Fiat, Fiat bought that game. There's no, no question about that. Well, Alan, Alan says to me that the because Sniffer didn't play that game, did he? Um, I don't think um, John played that game. Was or Sniffer was ba- um, banned? If they would have gone to replay, I think he would have been eligible um, to play. But Alan yeah, wasn't well, there. Him and Billy got banned in the semi-final. That's yeah. right, yeah. And uh, Alan was saying to me the boys had told him that the referee uh, turned up on the same players uh, playing as the he AC did. Milan players. He did. That's absolutely true. Yeah. It's, it's incredible, isn't it? I mean, it is. It is. It is. But but it again, was, it, it was definitely fair that, that, that bought that game. There's no no question. But when you you going on uh, when you won the first league championship uh, at Anfield, it was yeah, it oh, was it, yeah it was Don that says to to Billy and, and the boys, go and take the championship into the cup. And and, no, the, and the Liverpool yeah. fans were singing champions, champions mm. to Leeds United. As yeah, you say, there was a there was a great camaraderie, great respect, and um, and Don Reeve and Bill were were, yeah. were best yeah. of buddies, wasn't they? Yeah, I, I, I can remember it as if it were yesterday. That it was twenty third of April, Monday night, and uh, it was it was superb. Um, they actually went to. Um, like you say, the, the cop end. Mm. But me and my mate Andy Robinson, we were we would we were down. Leeds took ten thousand that night. Yeah. In the end, and, we, and, and there were a few Leeds fans that can And me and Andy went on on pitch, <laughs> yeah. and I still have a little bag of grass, which looks a little bit, you know, right? suspect now. I still have some of that that turf. We both got some of that turf um, that night, and it was a Monday night. We were both still at school. Um, I'd, I'd wing my way to, to go to the game. Um, yeah, and it were it were incredible. Spray Gary Spray were absolutely fantastic that night. Um, and it were nil nil obviously, and, and they won the league. Um, and then were crowned champions a couple of days later when Johnny Giles scored against Forest. So and and, and that was a record the, 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 at the time. It was a record two defeats in that season. And um, and 67 points were a record at the time for two two points for a win. Did you not yeah. ever think about putting the grass into your lawn at home? Because it, it, it would have knitted in and it would have grown. And you, mind you, you probably moved. Terry Curran, when he, he played at, at Wembley uh, for... Um, for Southampton against Nottingham Forest oh, in 79. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Alan Ball said to him, because they used to have tankards in them days, when Leeds United won in 68, the League Cup, it wouldn't yeah, have been a medal, yeah. it would have been a tankard. Yeah. And Ball, he says, get that grass, TC, put it put it, yeah. uh, put it, in your lawn at home and it'll grow. <laughs> you might not ever get to Wembley again. And that's the thing with experience. You, don't, you know what's round the corner. But Leeds United, yeah. and Alan says to me, you know, we played that many games at Wembley. We were almost at, at Wembley every other every other season. It was like a almost like a home fixture for Leeds United playing at Wembley and yeah. playing in, in yeah. major tournaments. Yeah. But seventy two, yeah. I do want to talk a bit about nineteen seventy two and towards the end of, of Don's reign there. When you won yeah. the centenary FA Cup final with Alan Clark's yeah. wonderful diving headed goal Sniffy was originally going to volley it, but the ball just dipped. That's right, uh, it just fell, yep. Yeah, and he, he dived in head in and put it in the corner. You know, there was a revy plan against Birmingham City that Paul Trevelyan um, literally wrote about in the Sunday People. And, and Don was always, from the early days of the late 50s, to the, almost the end of his reign at Leeds United, he was ahead of the game, wasn't he? Because it was oh, yeah. Schooler, the um, the Cardiff City manager, who'd said that 
we could have beat Leeds United. If we'd have stopped mm-hmm. Johnny Joles, we'd have beat Leeds United and done. Yeah, yeah, so said, you're, yeah. having a, you're having a laugh, ain't you, really? And then he said yeah. to the Beaver, you get older, Schooler, you do an interview and, and we'll put that. And Freddie Goodwin, a former Leeds United player, right, yeah, fell yeah, yeah. for the plan. Birmingham City dropped Gordon Taylor and played George Smith and Leeds yeah. ran riot. And John said to me, the best that he... I asked him if he could relive one season. What season would it be? And he said the best year we had at Leeds United was 1972. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was just spot with that Monday night game, wasn't it? Yeah. You know. Yeah. But again, straight uh, after the FA Cup final, forced to well, play never, Wolverhampton that Wanderers. Again. That, no, that was that was that Alan Ardick, uh, uh who again didn't like Don Levy, and and vice versa. To be fair. Mm. But, but Alan Ardick what, what didn't like Leeds United at all. Um, and and he, he, he blamed it on England playing. Well, he, he blamed it on two things. That England were playing um, the game and they'd have to take the Leeds United players out of there. And Because Leeds, Don, Don wanted it moving a few days later, yeah. which is it's not unreasonable. Um but but they wouldn't do it, and they had, had to play that. And then and then Leeds were unlucky that night, and the, and they were robbed that night. To be fair, they were. Um, and again, on, on the, when I was talking to um, uh, Mr. Pickwick, Roger Kirkpatrick, yeah, he was actually an assessor that night. He was a referee's assessor, and he said he could not believe the the decisions that were being made, and he wasn't allowed to say anything. Mm. It's Frank Munro, there was a penalty. A handball, Frank Munro, which Norman Norman says he had it in his hand that long, he could have taken the laces out. Mm. <laughs> you know, it, 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 all these courts and and it was just and Leeds obviously Mick Jones had been injured in the final, he couldn't play, and the, and a lot of players played with with painkiller injections. Don 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 used to ask him to play, even though. Somebody else could have stepped in, you know. Mm. He wanted them players in, and they played with painkilling injections. Um, and they were unlucky that night, but it were it were it was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. But um, it what it just want to be really. It's one of them things. Um, the the players never got chance to celebrate the FA Cup really, because they had to head straight yeah. up and stay in Birmingham, you know. Um, and it was just and. It was just, I can remember that night as, as though it was. I mean, I actually had a gap weekend. <laughs> when when, Le- when Leeds played it, the FA Cup final, I actually left school on the, the Friday, the Friday night, the 5th of May. And uh, we went down in my dad's Ford Transit and we sl- stayed overnight um, and had a gap weekend, watched the Cup final, stayed in his transit, come home. And I started work on the Monday as a pen and decorator. <laughs> and I, I told them I'd got another interview somewhere else. Um, and they, they, they applauded me honestly because I said, that's great. That, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I am. I'm, I think I'm going to settle in here. But I need to go to this interview because um, it, it's courtesy, really. And I was going down to Molyneux. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was my, that was my first day at work. <laughs> So, but yeah, um, th- yeah, that was my gap weekend, and what a fantastic weekend! But the Monday night spoiled it. They, they, they so deserved that double, you know, they really did. And there's not many of them left now, and it's a shame. There's there's six now left. Um, I speak I speak to David Harvey quite a bit, and he's a bit of a recluse now. Is David Harvey? Um, but yeah, it, it's 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 sad really. They deserved more, did Leeds, uh, trophy-wise. Um, sometimes Don's overcautious. That lost us some. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm glad you that. But a lot of times they, they were they were um, they were robbed. No doubt about that. Well, Paul Trevelyan, a fantastic what a character, he is. yeah, what a, a character, a fantastic piece of Leeds United history when and again he had to go and sell the idea and it was like Don and, and, and Jack that he had to pretty much get it by with the sock tags and the uh, yeah, you, yeah. 
you know, all the, all the the wavings, the crowd, the the uh, right, the, the yeah, badge, yeah, yeah. the the names Down on the back of the sh- that, yeah, absolutely yeah. Les Cocker as well with the the the, the, the yeah. training, uh, the the kickabout before. Certainly, I think kicking the first balls, time involved in the crowd, yeah, yeah, and and I think in 1972. I think that was the first time that anybody really had organised uh, kickabouts when Birmingham City played Leeds United in, in that That's semi-final. Right, yeah. And John said to me, that was the best that Leeds United played all season. Yeah. Birmingham played in red that day for some reason as well, didn't they? Yeah, it did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, abs- you absolutely battered us. <laughs> but it was a great Leeds United side. I love the way that you've got in the book accounts from supporters that were there at the time. So pivotal moments and you've gone to and you've referenced the person that was there at the time. So it's like all all bases are covered, aren't they? Yeah, that that that, that, that my most favourite part of this book. Yeah. Um, I, I put it out I put it out a couple of years ago, actually. I've been writing it for a couple of years. I put it out to people who were at them games. And, I, and a lot of my... I mean, I'm 67 now, well, 67 in March, and, I, I, and people are older than me that are still going. And and I, I started. I wanted I wanted the stories. I wanted the real stuff, um, you know, uh, and people that were there, and and that's that's what makes the book for me. It's somewhat, yeah. It makes it something different, you know. And these are all all full accounts of people, plus plus people, you know, opposition supporters. Um, that were there. I got a good response from. Uh, um, well, obviously you saw the, the Goodison Park um, Everton fans, and it were it were it were incredible, really. Sunderland, um, it and that that it's football is all about supporters. Yeah. Well, it used to be, and and that's what I wanted, and that's what I wanted from it personal, and and not just touching on another book. I, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called Every Cloud about. It was Leeds, Leeds, how Leeds United were formed out of Leeds City. Yeah. And and the best part of that research for that book was going to people's houses that were descendants from from people who would either play for Leeds City or United or who who fought in the war, you know. And I I would check like royalty, and, and it were there they were heroes, you know. And I were going into their house and they were, they were putting. Not so much parties, but they'll put in food out and sort of like, oh, oh, you great, and and they'd bring all the family nieces and nephews and 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 Harry Duggan who played for Leeds United in in nineteen forties, and it was just it was just incredible, and that's what I wanted somebody who was there and who speaks about it and who talks about it, and and that's history, and that's what it's that's what football's all about for me. You know, it's it's great. You, you get these stories that that really mean something to people. Like so, somebody sat on a in a in, on a motorbike and a sidecar going to Scunthorpe, and uh, somebody uh, hitchhiking, hitchhiking. That happened all, all all the time, didn't it? People thumbing thumbing lifts to to different parts of the country, and it were you know, oh, it was great, fantastic. I'd love to go back. I would love to go back. I think that yeah. us football fans of a certain age are, are very lucky because you had we're those not. fan we're experiences. Not. You had the players. I think the players of yesteryear were very lucky. OK, they didn't earn the riches that the players of today earn, but there was an innocence. There was a, you're going to get to the game no matter how. You've got the accounts yeah. of, of those working class people. These That's days, right. it's it's completely different. And I think it it isn't the game that we uh, that we got bought up loving how long did it take you to uh, collate all the stories and put it into this wonderful labor of love and it was published by pitch wasn't it it was it was uh, I, i've wrote i've written four now with pitch and yeah. they've been they've been absolutely fantastic as pitch paul camillan and, and jane and they've been absolutely fantastic um I um I got on them when I when I joint wrote one uh with, with a mate of mine Andy Starmore and and from then on um went with pitch and um 
they've, they've been absolutely fantastic. The, the real, the really good sports uh, book producers, and it, yeah, I've, 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 I've not got admiration for them. They've helped me along, and I'll, I'll give them an idea, and I say it's not going to be for another couple of years, you know, um, and I've got this, and tell me to bugger off, or, or do you want to go with it? And, and they've been brilliant. They've been brilliant. They do some um, fantastic publications, and they and do. They really do. They really do. And there are so many books that are that are that are quite different, but but stories that need to be told. You know, you look at the modern game, and I, I you know, I love football. I mean, we all love football, but again, yeah. it ain't the same. The historic content of this book is fantastic. And it's a book that needed to be written because a lot of people don't understand. OK, yeah, they see that Leeds United won a couple of honours in the 70s. They know of yeah. Don Reavy and Billy Bremner. Yeah. They can yeah. see the uh, the statues outside of, uh, yeah. of Ellen Road. But yeah. behind that, there's a story and it starts yeah. in the 50s. You know, it starts when Don played football. It starts when Don uh, was born in Middlesbrough and then played through the ranks. Leicester played, Manchester City joined, Leeds yeah. United, yeah. Uh, you know, and some of the fantastic managers that, that you've had in in the past. Rache Carter, uh, to name just one. Yeah. I mean, one historic yeah. name, that is Rache Carter. Indelible mark yeah. that he left on English football as well. So all these yeah. things are in the book and it, it's a must-read book for any football fan that um, that that loves I suppose loves winners loves one you know for me the greatest the greatest football team that we've seen and how that team come about now them characters got involved yeah. at Leeds yeah. United and the stories of fantastic supporters as well thank you very much yeah you've done a tremendous job Gary, um, can I thank you for your time, sir? Is there anything else that you would like to add? And what else are you going to add to your publications going forward, sir? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm, uh, the, the, the next one that's in line, and, and, and thank you for your comments on that book. That is really, really nice of you. Um, and no plans at the minute, but we, we are actually doing a... We're in the middle of a massive project of Billy Bremner. Right. Um, Is it the statue big, in Stirling, uh, the, the university? That's the one. Uh, yeah. That's the one. Four, four of us started that in 2018. Yeah. Um, we, we were going up and down on the train and we were going into pubs and, and meeting people and, and blah, blah, blah. And it's finally taken off. We, we did some Zoom calls, but I don't like Zoom things. Yeah. And anyway, now it's 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 the situation now where we've got um, there's about twenty different organisations on the Scotland side that are really into it. We've got kids from schools, St Mordens, where where Billy was in Rablock, where he was brought up, um, and now we're just working on the Leeds side, Temple News, and part of Leeds where Billy lived all his time um, with Vicky, or like you say, but. <laughs> Don Revy brought Vicky down to Leeds and um, and we're on with that part now and the money is coming in through heritage funds and, and grants and that and the, there's, a, there's a branch called Luscos, it's the Leeds United Supporters Club of Scandinavia and they're just waiting in the wings to, to put a load of money into it and they've got, they've got 8,000 members um, and they've got quite a few bobbers and Vikings, you know so we, we're hoping it's going to go. But we, we um, the statue was about 100,000. Don Revis were 115. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're looking at that. And it's going to be built in Raplock and we're behind that. So I'm, I'm thinking at the moment of, of doing a book on that because it's from, its, from its early start, you know, just going up to pubs in Glasgow and, and talking to people and, that stopping in midair at us because we were English and once we once they found out what we wanted, it it went from then and um, we were speaking to people who knew Billy, uh, and it was just 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 brilliant. So it's it's 
that's that's probably my next my next thing. But um, just enjoy this book for now, and then we'll see where we go. Absolutely. How can people follow that project that you and the boys are, um, are, are forwarding and are, are launching, and you know, pretty much behind it and driving it forward? Because Again, I did say earlier about Bremner and, and Giles, and I was listening yeah. to Talk Sport the other day, and Ali McCoist was on, and I think he said it was the 1998 uh, World Cup finals, or it mm-hmm. was around that time. And he yeah. didn't, he'd interviewed Pelle, and he says, Pelle hadn't got a clue who I was, you know, and I was just a, you know, a <laughs> Scotsman just interviewing yeah. Pelle. And Pelle said, yeah. How's Billy Bremner? And, oh, really? You know, and when when people, you know, like the great man Pele reference Billy Bremner, for the young yeah. ones, they do not yeah. realise how brilliant Billy was as yeah. as a player, yeah. 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 how instrumental he was to to Leeds United, and yeah. and it's something that should never ever be forgotten. And through projects that that you're driving forward. Billy's right, life right. won't be forgotten. Yeah. And and taken so so too far too early. What was he fifty five when uh, when he it, passed it, away? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was just short of fifty five, yeah. Yeah, and, and Alan Clark, I didn't realise talking to Alan, um I'm nobody's child. I'm that was Billy's uh, karaoke song, by the way. That's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, Alan Clark absolutely adored him and yeah. When, when we when we speak now, um, and he, he does these these Lee's Lee's legend things yeah. that's going, uh, he, he says, and there's a tear in his eye, and it's a genuine tear, you know. And he, yeah, he just is. says, "There's never a day day goes by that I don't think of Billy," and and I, and 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 that's true, is that? And that's that's a Midlander as well, you know, because he 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 actually said to Alan, didn't he? Well, he told you anyway, but you know that he, he came into Leeds. Obviously from Fulham, then Leicester um, as a bit of an outsider, and mm-hmm. he said he would take, he would take him straight away. And again, that would that would on Levy, he he recognised that he needed something else with, other than Mick Jones, and uh, and it just 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 really quickly that that you're on about Pelly there, um, yeah. Nigel Davy, uh, was a, a reserve fullback with Leeds, and he played a, a, a good few games with Leeds, but he was he was also just an understudy. Which Don always looked after. Yes. And uh, it was it was it, it were really good friends to, with Terry Cooper, who lived in Tenerife, that, that died recently. Mm. And they were telling me about Terry, um, and they, they, they went to a they went to a function, and Pelly, Pelly turned up, and he given Terry this envelope. Uh, he says. I've been meaning to see you for a couple of years now, blah, 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 and all that. And there were £10,000 in it. £10,000. He said there was there's certain players that had given these envelopes to And I can back it up, that. Oh. And, that, that and that's, you know, and, it, and and it just he thought it was just like his autograph and a couple of maybe keepskate, you, you know, uh, just just like keepsakes that, that, that go from the game, you know. Wow. Ten thousand pounds. But Alan Alan said exactly he admired the... Terry Cooper. He admired Terry Cooper. Yeah. I mean Terry, what a great left back, one of the great probably the greatest left back that England's ever had. Yeah. The great yeah. Terry Cooper. But yeah. um Alan said exactly the same to me. Um and I've only really spoken to Alan once or twice when we were setting the the interview up, the podcast up and then then we'd done it. And he said of, of Billy he said, "I was like the uh, the brother I never had. We we yeah, we yeah. were that close, me and Billy." And he said to yeah. me, "There's not a day go by when I don't miss him." It's so, true, is that? And he's absolute that. genuine, absolute genuine. Yeah, yeah, and although yeah. he although he was born in Will and All in uh, Warsaw area right. in the Black Country, Warsaw, yeah. he says, yeah. "I'm an honorary Yorkshireman." And his, grand, right, yeah. his grandsons yeah. are uh, Leeds United yeah. fans, so he's steeped. He's absolutely Leeds yeah. United through and through. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. what your club does to people that get into the fabric of Leeds United. They take them into that white rose bosom and um, they just make them 
one of you. And uh, once you're in, once you're in, you're in. Absolutely, you can't bloody get out, mate. Like the <laughs> <laughs> like, like that black country route. They don't let us brummies in or out. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Uh, it's been a fantastic hour. Thanks so much, Gary, for your time. Please keep oh, no in problem. touch. And all the best with the Billy Bremner statue. And if you're writing a book, and and um, please give me a, a heads up, and we'll do another podcast. And if I can help you in any way going forward, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a link. I'll give a link to that Billy, and um, brilliant. And we'll, uh, that, that'll be that's fantastic. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you, and good. Good luck to all at Leeds United Football Club as well. Thanks, Gary. And you up there again, mate. Thank you. Cheers, pal. Appreciate it. And thanks for listening, yes, guys. Yes, all the best, mate. Thank all you. The best. Bye bye. Bye bye. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. That's what you'll feel with Bowl and Branch's best selling signature sheets in a hundred percent organic cotton. In a recent customer survey, 96% replied that Bowl and Branch sheets get softer with every wash. Start getting your best night's sleep in sheets that get softer and softer for years to come. Try their sheets with a 30 night guarantee. Plus, get 15% off your first order at bowlandbranch.com. Code BUTTERY. Exclusions apply. See site for details.